Welcome back, Shalliners. Well, tomorrow we're going to kick off Vlogmas. That's right. I'm going to try to do 30 days of content for the 31 day, well, 31 days of content for the 31 days of December. I'm going to try, like, no promises that I'm going to make all 31 videos, but, like, that's the goal. You know, like, these are hard. But, I feel like we deserve a holiday bonanza, right? A Christmas rush, a Hanukkah boom, a Kwanzaa cornucopia. So that's what we're going to try to do here on this channel. And I'm obviously going to do a ton of like celebrity content, all sort of like the topics you guys have been suggesting. I keep notes in my phone. Like, don't worry, I have all the topics logged. But obviously, tell me some more stuff that you want to see from Vlogmas. I'm going to also be doing a lot of story times, sharing some personal stuff, some stories about my family, maybe the story of the breakup that you guys want to know, the story of my ex-husband. I'm going to be putting it all out there. It's going to be a very vulnerable December for me. But I wanted to start it off with a brand new segment here in the Chalantourage. Shell literature. That's right, ladies. We're starting a book club. I'm an author. I'm a two-time published author with Random House. No big deal. No big deal. And I'm like, I should be recommending more books, right? I should be personally reading more books. And like, I am not a very well-read author, which is to my great shame. And so I really want to make reading a huge focus of 2020 for me. And one of my friends last year, she read I think like 2018, her goal was to read 52 books in a year. She read one book every week. And the standout book she told me was this one, Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Now, it's a, kind of a new book. I mean, it's new enough that it's like um, still in hardback. Maybe she read it. This, she must have read it this year then. So this book <clears throat> is what we're going to start with. I'm going to explain it in a minute. But before I do, like I always tell you guys, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, and we can have our own little private vlogmas, <laughs> find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and click Get Help. You can also shop some merch and take some fun quizzes to see how your social media stacks up out there. Also, I'm doing a fundraiser for a homeless mama named Sherry who lives in Atlanta. She lives just outside of Atlanta. She's a mom to three kids. She's handicapped. And she recently had a huge cut to her benefits to the point that she ended up on the street. She's currently living in a motel and we have a GoFundMe up right now for her. And we've raised enough money to keep her in that hotel for the next month. So through December, otherwise she was going to be kicked out on December 3rd and they were going to be on the street. And it's so, so important that we help other people here on the Chalantourage, right? Because that's what we always talk about, how to be an alpha female. What is an alpha? An alpha doesn't just look out for themselves. They don't just lead the pack. They build the pack. And this is what we have to do. We don't want to be disrespected and taken advantage of in the micro level from this fuckboy or this sister-in-law or whatever. We got to help other people on the macro level. We got to get out to the polls and vote for people who are going to help other people as well. And when it comes to charity, it's just, it's overwhelming, right? But I always think back on this, I probably heard it in Sunday school, this like cheesy parable, this cheesy little story where like two boys, always boys, two little boys were walking along the seashore and one was picking up sand dollars and throwing them back in the ocean so that they could live. And the other boy was like, what are you doing? It doesn't make any difference. You can't save them all. And the kid chucked another one back and he said, it made a difference to that one. And that always stuck with me because when we look at like people who are poor, who are disadvantaged, whatever it is, we think like we feel so overwhelmed. It's like, well, I can't save everyone. You don't have to save everyone. I know that. And if we start to think like that, we do feel overwhelmed and we feel helpless and it just makes you like shrink back into your shell. And it's like, what's even the point? Well, Sherry is our sand dollar today, right? So Sherry has had a tough life a lot of bad breaks, a lot of health issues. And the goal here is to get her some permanent housing because this is one thing that stuck out to me with Sherry. And I'm going to do actually a larger video on this is like she lost, she got her benefits cut because she was making too much money at her job. Her job was at Popeye's. Okay. She wasn't like VP of marketing for Pepsi. She was making like 60 cents more than the cutoff. And social security was like, no, you make too much money. Take care of yourself. This is how the system works. It's fucked up. And it de-incentivizes people to work. Why would you do that? Because when you work, you have to pay for a babysitter, right? So it's like, but if I don't work, I can stay home with my kids and I make less money with my welfare checks, but I'm expending 
less, you know, like the math is just messed up. And then these people have this stigma that they're lazy and they don't want to work. That's not the case. Okay. And here, what we do here on this channel is we dispel shitty myths about women that the patriarchy has foisted upon us. Right. And like I said, we don't just do that in the micro, we do it in the macro. Queens help queens because we all know there's enough room at the table for all of us. Us, us helping her doesn't take away our shine as a woman. It builds us up. It makes us better, right? So we're trying to raise money. I'm actually thinking about maybe like planning a trip down there. I want to get on the ground. I want to talk to some like help agencies, some charities, some business owners and see what we can do. Like we, if we get together, we can turn this woman's life around. We can break the chains of generational poverty. Her kids will not know this life. Think about that. Wouldn't that be amazing? Like, even if you don't care about other people, care about your own ego, like that's a pretty cool thing to do. But I'll do a whole video on that. So in the meantime, please consider donating even $5. And if you donate $40 or more, you get a free question with me. Just leave it in the comment section of the donation. I get to it ASAP. I'm fast tracking all those questions. So if you want help like ASAP, give back and you get something in return. So let's talk more about Shell Literature. This is gonna be a three-part series, well, three more parts, because the way this book is structured is in three segments. So this is a non-fiction book, but it reads like fiction. Let's read the inside flap, okay? Over the past eight years, journalist Lisa Tadeo has driven across the country six times to embed herself with ordinary women from different regions and backgrounds. The result, three women, is the deepest nonfiction portrait of desire, desire, ever written and one of the most anticipated books of the year. So it's three parts and it talks about three women. And yeah, it's written almost as though it's fiction. Let me just flip to a page. <clears throat> Let's see. She saw him again at her sister's wedding in the late summer before her junior year. The wedding reception was held at the Gardner Hotel and Mark came, uninvited, with some buddies. Since he wasn't a dancer, she knew he'd come for her. He brought her outside by the arm. It was a pleasant September evening and Arlene was wearing a long dress and he kissed her inside a telephone booth. Like, it's simple prose, but you don't think you're reading this like first person sort of nonfiction narrative, but you are. So the three segments. We begin in an Indiana suburb with Lena, a homemaker and mother of two whose marriage, after a decade, has lost its passion. Ooh. Then we go to North Dakota. We meet Maggie, a 17-year-old high school student who finds a confidant in her handsome married English teacher. That one's going to fuck me up. You know how I feel about this. Finally, in an enclave of the Northeast, we meet Sloan, a gorgeous, successful, and refined restaurant owner who is happily married to a man who likes to watch her have sex with other men and women. I've always believed that the best way to impart wisdom and lessons is through stories. And I've always said, I don't care if that story is about one of the apostles, Khloe Kardashian, or your mom's best friend. It doesn't matter. Wisdom is wisdom. And we can take so much from the lives of others in like a non-pushy way. So I'm really excited to read this. So each update is going to be on the different segments. So we're going to start reading about Lena, the homemaker and mother of two. Marriage is passionless and what she goes through. And we're gonna break it down, we're gonna talk about it. So the place to talk about it is here in this video, right here in the comment section. I want you guys to pick up this book. If you don't wanna do hardcover, you can also download it. It's like 10 bucks cheaper if you download it and like read it on Kindle or, you know, like a the myriad of different things. <clears throat> or get it at the library. We're gonna to try to do this a week from now, a segment a week, right, for all of December. And come back to the comment section and start a thread or, if you want to do an IRL book club, absolutely do that. Like get together with some friends, talk in the comment section. Maybe you guys can exchange information or something like that. Also go on my Instagram if you want to collaborate that way. My Insta is ShallonXO and start talking in the comment section. You guys can have little subgroups. I have, I have a feeling my fan accounts are going to kind of like latch onto this and maybe they can kind of be their own little book club. So I'm really, really excited about this. And I just, I'm excited to... I'm excited to read more. Reading is such a better use of our time than scrolling. But since we're talking about books, I want to address something you guys have asked me about a lot. What are some books that really impacted my life? 
because like I said I don't read a ton but when I do I really try to make them meaningful and <laughs> so I really try to go for non-fiction books okay so I'm gonna give you two fiction and two non-fiction and I don't have them with me I actually like don't really keep books like I, I like to read them and then like release them back into the wild you know but all of these four books I actually have kept they're like four out of the six books all the books I have in my house are the ones I've written I'm a narcissist I just don't have them here with me in my mom's house first book I read that changed my life why men love bitches <gasps> oh bible this is the bible and you might be saying well I don't want to be a bitch girl trust me in order to be considered like a through and through bitch like you gotta you gotta work at it it's like bone deep don't worry you're not going to read this book and go so hard to the other side you're a monster and it's not about being a bitch like the way she defines bitch is a girl who withholds her time a girl who puts herself first she is a priority her goals are the priority her life her friends you know who's not a priority a dude oh you asked me for a date like two hours before you want to see me no i'm a bitch i got time i got time for me i don't have time for you you respect my schedule. You respect my priorities. It really completely changed the way I approach dating because they, it, you're either a bitch or you're too nice. And it's so true. Like I went into this thing and like, well, I don't want to be a bitch. Okay. Well then I was a pushover and that's the memo guys got. And we teach people how to treat us and what we permit, we promote. So I was teaching guys that, well, of course they can ask me for a date 30 minutes, you know, before they want to hang out because they're bored, they're drunk, they're horny, whatever based on results that works i'm gonna say yes of course they can ask me to pay for half the date based on results i'm gonna say yes it truly is like the backbone of my life and of the advice that i give to you guys so definitely read it it's short and it's so empowering even if you only read like one chapter it's unbelievable the second book the second nonfiction book i read which i actually might do for a shell literature book club is women food and god by janine roth i have had issues with eating my whole life like i've dabbled in drugs i've done like my body weight and cocaine probably at some point but like i was never like super into it because food is my drug of choice food is always going to be my drug of choice you know and it's frustrating because you can live a life without cocaine or alcohol or meth or whatever you can't live a life without food it's very difficult so food is always this like thing with me just this like it's a compulsion I could keep it under control but like like I said it's my drug of choice and three times a day I have to confront my drug addiction and women food and God kind of made the argument well not kind of it very specifically made the argument that what women are craving when they have these food issues is actually God which is love and self-love and self-respect and acceptance and it just was a completely different way to look at it because we get caught up in the diets we get caught up in all of this stuff and not saying that you shouldn't have a healthy eating regime or do something that works for you but how we eat is symptomatic of something so much larger you know and Janine Roth said that spirituality whatever form that may take just in terms of self-care doesn't have to be you go to church and get baptized it's spirituality is in like prioritizing reading and feeding your soul instead of scrolling on Instagram and making yourself anxious and you got to reach for the pecan pie that's left over in the fridge which it is and I can't stop thinking about it so that book made a huge huge impact and I would love for us to break it down <clears throat> I think it'd be really good now the fiction ones these are two fiction books I read constantly like when I love something like I read it over and over again <laughs> you know so the first book is The Great Gatsby I read this every summer I love it and every time I read it I get something different out of it because the characters are all so rich and interesting and like every time I read it, I kind of see things from a different character's perspective so the basic premise is that Jay Gatsby dates this girl Daisy and she is the love of his life and he orients every single thing he does in his life to get her back what he does for a living, how much money he makes, how he spends the money, the parties he throws, where he lives. Everything is about getting her back. Why do we care about that? Why does that resonate here on the Chalantourage? Hurt Lockers. Daisy is the ultimate Hurt Locker. And we talk about Hurt Lockers, if you've never heard this term, it's a term I give to a person that we cannot get over, that we imprint on 
during a time in our life when we feel weak, vulnerable, downtrodden, and we imprint on this guy, not because we love him, we interpret it as love, because we want to be him, right? We want something they have, and we don't know how to interpret that, so it comes out as obsessive love. Daisy was Gatsby's heart locker because he wanted her life. This perfect upbringing, this pedigree that was unimpeachable, her social station that she didn't even have to work for. He was a poor kid, and he idolized that lifestyle. He didn't idolize her. Like, she was kind of whatever -ish. He wanted to step inside her life, right? And so that's what resonates with me about that book and how ruinous that could be because unless you acknowledge that you will chase that green light for the rest of your life right to your own destruction and the fourth and final book this book i read when i was in college and it was oh it like spoke to my soul the virgin suicides i love this book like my copy i've had it since college it's highlighted dog-eared underlined like notes blah 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 it's like my own little workbook and it's about it's fiction and it's about sisters who commit suicide and yes it it doesn't glorify suicide but it does romanticize it but it also talks about it in very stark terms and in terms of like what suicide means to people and <clears throat> there's this one passage where he's like is suicide giving up or is it or is it taking off cumbersome boots and lying down after a weary day, you know? And it was, it's just an interesting way to think about things. If you are depressed and suicidal, do not read this book. But the real reason I loved it is because it's told from the point of view of these like teenage neighbor boys who were like idolizing and obsessing over these sisters across the street. And I'd never read something from the point of view of boys my age there was anything other than like <laughs> like Beavis and Butthead shit. Like the way these boys viewed these girls is how I need to believe boys view us. They looked at them like they were fucking unicorns, that they were mysterious and, you know, magical and dreamy. And just it's a very lyrical, heady book. It's beautifully written. It's so beautiful. And it gave me a shifted perspective on what boys are like. And it made me realize I only want to be dating boys who view girls this way. Not the, uh, because there is a character in there, Trip Fontaine, who's just like this one dimension. He's a fuck boy. He's a 1972 fuck boy. And to juxtapose that against these boys who are so much more cognitive and like worshipful of women, the way men should be when they're raised right, it really was it was impactful for me and it started to put all the boys I interact with in very sharp focus and they became categorized as like Trip Fontaine or the neighbor boys, you know? And I it was it was just great. It was really eye opening. So if that's kind of your age group, I think you'd really like it. So your homework challenges is to pick up or download three women, Lisa Tadeo, uh, borrow a copy, go to the library, get one copy and pass it around. It looks longer than it is, and like these you know, things kind of skip around. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so this isn't written like third, 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 like Maggie, Lena, so-and-so. It kind of skips around. So I'm going to read the whole thing, right? And then we're going to break it down. I'm just going to do a video on each lady. So I'll give you guys some time to read it. Get started. Get started in this and we're going to talk more. I'm so excited about Shell Literature. If you post about it, please hash, hashtag Shell Literature. And like I said, tell me what you want to see from Vlogmas. I'm really excited to do it. I'm already tired thinking about it, but I love you guys and I want to talk to you all December long. And don't forget, please, please, please donate to Miss Sherry's GoFundMe. Um, all of it is going 100% to her. Like I'm obviously like not taking any money out of this for goodness sakes. Like that's crazy. And you know, when we donate to things like the Red Cross, which are obviously amazing causes, you don't know what percentage of your money is getting translated. You don't know, like, what it's going for. Is it going to here? Is it going to admin stuff? Like, we know where this money is going. And if you have any questions about where it's going, let me know. If you have any suggestions about charities or programs or anything in the Atlanta area, I would be so appreciative. If you want to get involved, if you're a business owner and you want to, like help Sherry get a job, get back on her feet. She doesn't want to be on public assistance. Nobody does. I mean, 
I don't know, dude, maybe some people do. That is the vast minority, okay? Women are ashamed of their need. They want better for their children. Like I said, follow me on social media at ShallonXO. And if you have a love question, head to shallonluster.com. I'll see you guys for the next.